So Rails 7 is shaping up really nicely. We're going to have a alpha release out pretty soon in the next few weeks, I hope. And what's really exciting about this update in terms of the JavaScript integration that uh, I've been showing a bunch of alpha previews from is that just in the last few weeks, it's really come together for that alternate path. As I've said, the default in Rails 7 is going to be the new approach of using import maps where you're not even required to use any form of node, have any node installed or have any of that machinery on your machine. But of course, if you want to do JSX or if you want to do other forms of transpiled JavaScript, um, you're probably still going to need a bundler or transpiler, and that's totally fine. Rails 7 is going to ship with a much better way of doing that than what we've had with Webpacker. It's going to be much simpler in the sense that the integration between Rails and this JavaScript bundler and transpiler is very thin. It is essentially a handoff where we rely entirely on the JavaScript ecosystem setup to do the initial build just like you would in any other project that's purely JavaScript based. And then that build is getting handed off to Rails via the asset pipeline through a builds directory in the asset um, path. So that creates this very easy uh, handoff where you can refer to these build outputs in your Rails application and have everything work as though you were still using Sprockets, except of course that your JavaScript and as we'll see soon here, your CSS can be built this way. So I wanted to take a opportunity to show off what we have now. It is uh, two new gems one called JS bundling dash rails and the other one called CSS bundling dash rails, which is something new. So let me show you how that works in an application that is going to use ES build and tailwind through a node setup where both are being bundled at the same time with a rails application. This new application is being generated off Rails main. All of the machinery needed to make this work is in Rails main right now. This is the main branch that will be cutting new gems from uh, alpha gems very soon. So what we're gonna start here is a new application. And as you can see, I have two attributes to that beyond the dash dat dev to make it work with the GitHub checkout of Rails main, that is dash J. And you can see I'm passing ES build here as the option. That'll set up the new Rails skeleton to use ES build to compile the JavaScript in that setup. The other choices that we have through the JS bundling dash Rails gem is rollup and webpack. So you can pick one of those three bundlers to bundle your JavaScript. I really like ES build. It is very quick. It has great defaults. It has defaults for both JSX and for TypeScript. So for a lot of uh, applications, you won't even need to do much, if any, configuration at all. And then we also have dash dash CSS. And that is the interface to the CSS bundling dash Rails gem, which also have three options. There is Tailwind for a default configuration of Tailwind with JIT compilation, a basic post CSS setup with um, all the new CSS standards that are coming, and also a setup for using Dart SAS. So you can pick one of those three setups and have your Rails skeleton pre-configured with them. We're going to start with these two options, ES build and Tailwind. And as you can see now, when I run my Rails new command, there's sort of a lot more going on. It looks more like the Webpacker build setup as, as we used to have it versus the import map default, which is a lot slimmer. But this is the work to set everything up when you want to use Node and you want to use these tools that are available only through that ecosystem. So. Let's jump in here to our um, new application. And I'm just going to create a um, controller that's called a demo. And we're going to do a show action so that we have a place to play with both Tailwind and uh, ES build. So let's uh, start something else that is a new part of this setup, which is bin dev. Um, the thing with 
these uh, tools to bundle both Tailwind CSS and using ESBuild is that they each require a watch process. So now you would have to have three different processes. You'd have to start your Rails server, you'd have to start your CSS building, uh, bundling and you'd have to start your JavaScript bundling. So with bin dev that uses um, uh, this setup with a proc file, we can start all three of them at the same time. So as you can see, we're starting uh, Tailwind CSS, we're starting ES build and we're starting the Rails server with this setup. Um, and let's jump to a browser and see that we're actually running. Um, oh. This is actually on port 4,000 for now. I'm going to change that back to port 3,000 when I fix up the gems for this. But as you can see, we have this base setup. And if we go to demo slash show, not demos, but demo slash show, you can see we have this uh, file where we can put something into. And the first thing we're going to put into that is the setup for Tailwind, um, or rather the... Um, not the setup, but the source we want to use where Tailwind is going to compile a application's CSS file that uses just the classes that we're using in this Tailwind example. And I'm just grabbing one of the Tailwind UI examples that's free off the site, pasting that in here. And whoop, uh, let's go back here and see. We're actually going to put it in the um, index file. We just, oh, the show file that we just set up. I'm going to paste this over. And here we go. Now, if we jump back to the console, you'll see that a rebuilding step has been done here by the CSS process. If you look back and see what that has made in terms of the output, we can go into assets, builds, and then look at the CSS. And here you'll see the 800 lines of Tailwind CSS that we need to generate in order to use that component that I just pasted in right here. So let's have a look at that component and check that everything actually works. And it does. A nice stock Tailwind component um, that works with the JIT setup where um, the uh, JIT compilation step makes sure that we are only shipping the um, classes from the very large Tailwind library of classes that uh, we're using in the application. So that's a great first step. And you can see another uh, change here. Let's just try to see if we delete some of these classes and we save and then we jump back to the terminal. You'll see that once again, the CSS has been rebuilt. Um, so this is how you work with Tailwind. You just start using the Tailwind classes. And as you start using more and more of them, your application CSS will grow, not a issue. Um, you can actually also do a full configuration of this Tailwind setup, which is one of these advantages with the full node based setup is that you get to specify Tailwind exactly how you want it. So if you're doing customizations to it, this is a great setup. There's also a Tailwind config file that you can set up and specify here. You can see where the paths that are being used to purge the production CSS are being taken from. These are the paths that are being watched. So if we make any changes, it'll be examined and see which class names are being used. So that's Tailwind. It's a very basic installation. You'd go to Tailwind's site and you'd figure out whatever configuration you want. Um, the whole point of these gems is not to recreate Webpacker where we try to set up everything in a sophisticated way for you. These are just very basic setups and then you can follow any tutorial on the web for how to use these frameworks further. But now let's have a look at ES Build. Um, with ES Build, as I said, it's a, a great new JavaScript bundler that's super duper fast and uh, it ships with some great defaults in such a way actually that we're not even using a config file right now by default that may change in the future, but um, we don't actually need to, to just get started with, um, with React. So let's um, install the... Um, libraries that we need for React. We're just going to use Yarn here and we're going to add React and React DOM. And actually, as we add those things and jump back, you'll see that the JavaScript process here has picked up two changes to node modules and is ready to use those things without us even having to restart the server. That's pretty neat. Um, 
So let's set up our first React component here. Um, as you can see, this is the default setup that uses stimulus and turbo out of the gate, but we are going to create a new components um, directory. And we're gonna use that same example we've been using several times in these videos, which is the clock JSX example, straight off the React JS website. You see, we're importing React and we're importing React DOM, and then we're going to render this into a div with an ID of clock. So, first, let's import that component that we just set up. Uh, it's going to be the clock component, and then we're going to give it a space up here where we import the clock component. And again, if we jump back to the console, we'll see that. The CSS has changed or, or has recompiled because we made a save to that HTML file. It was looking for any new classes. We didn't add any, so the build is done. And then also the uh, JS setup has done another build. Okay, fine. Let's jump into the browser again and see that voila, here we have our component. And as you'll notice here, of course, we have Tailwind um, down below, and then we have our React component up above, but we can also mix and match those things, of course, such that we can use some Tailwind. Let's just do, for example, font extra bold. We'll use that in our React component. Uh, class equals font extra bold. Again, if we jump back, we'll see that the ES build has rebuilt our clock. And then let's jump over to our browser and see that we're getting the component rendered here with Tailwind styles applied to it. So this is just a very basic uh, showing of using these two things together. It's uh, pretty easy to get going. If you accept the fact that you're gonna have a full node setup, this is a great combination. Um, as I said, it is these two gems, JS bundling for Rails that does the setup where you have ES build, you have rollup JS, you have Webpack in their very basic forms and you can use any of them and you can even switch back and forth between them. The conventions this all rely on is the fact that we're going to use a shared standardized entry point. You can reconfigure this entry point in your configs or script setups and they are all going to by default compile into this builds directory that is mounted through the asset pipeline and now we can refer to it as though it was any other output from the asset pipeline. Um, the same thing with CSS build, as you see, the uh, readme file is almost a copy and paste. What we have right now is Tailwind, PostCSS, and Dart SAS. It works in exactly the same way. And if we have a look here at actually our package a JSON file, you can see what's going on. So we have these um, build scripts. There's a build script for ES build. There's a build script for CSS. And those things are called by the proc file um, using Foreman with the uh, bin slash dev setup so that we can run these three processes at the same time. Oh, this is where we want to put 3000. If we want to use the conventional uh, port for this, I'm going to fix that in the gem. And that is the setup. Um, as you can see, ES build didn't have a configuration. You're going to have a configuration if you use rollup or if you use Webpack, but there's very little to it. You can change this as you see fit. You can add your dependencies as you see fit, but we start with so little. There are no none of these uh, dependencies that are inside of Rails itself and buy you, bind you to certain versions of um, these dependencies. You can update them as you see fit. This is a very standardized um, integration with the JavaScript ecosystem. And I think it works a whole lot better than trying to wrap it. Now that we have the default with import maps for Rails 7, a setup where you don't even need any node set up at all. Uh, in fact, the dash dash CSS tailwind um, configuration for the skeleton also works with the import map setup. It uses the Tailwind CSS dash Rails gem that uh, does all the Tailwind purging through Ruby, actually, so you don't even need Node at all for that either. That's a great option as well. But this is it. This is where we are right now. I hope to have alpha versions of Rails 7 out shortly. But if you take a look at these gems, you can actually use them today. 
If you're starting a new application or you have an existing application on Rails 6, you can use the JS bundling dash Rails and the CSS bundling uh, dash Rails gems to set it up just like I showed in this video. And if you haven't already, check out this uh, write up I did about Rails 7 and all the three great answers that we have to JavaScript in 2021. I think this is a really solid path that will satisfy pretty much anyone trying to do Rails with JavaScript in a better way than we've ever done it before. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, see you in the next one.